Hey everyone and welcome to a brand new Digital Foundry Direct and as usual it's a very special one. <laughs> what we're going to be doing in this video is a dual unboxing. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, full retail packaging. We're going to be opening it up and therein there shall be consoles and joining me to discuss it a man who has gone through the exact same procedure on both machines John Linneman. That's right, Rich. Owing to the current times, we have to do this remotely, but we each had an experience uh, unboxing these machines in the last week. And yeah, what an experience it's been. This this whole concept of taking consoles out of boxes, it's remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, look, let's just get straight to it. Um, I think we'll start with PlayStation 5. I think so too. The thing about PlayStation 5, of course, is that, you know, virtually nothing has been sort of revealed about it so far. So we're going into this fresh. I mean, we've not physically seen the unit until it turned up at our houses, which is quite remarkable. Um, so yeah, I mean, the basic packaging, um, no real surprises here. It's basically like a PlayStation 4 box, really, in terms of how it's all set up. You've got a, a nice sleeve that goes over a plain white cardboard box, as you can see here. Uh, actually, my sleeve was damaged, oh, no. uh, even though it <laughs> even though it was actually delivered within another cardboard box. So uh, yeah, a real mystery there. But um, yeah, I mean, there's not really too much you can say about the PS5 packaging, really. You take off the sleeve, you've got a white cardboard box, you open the top of that, and inside you have your accessories package. And well, let's take a look at that. Inside the accessories box, uh, the power cable's right in front of you. You've got your manual, your quick start guide. Uh, your HDMI cable, um, surely this must be an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth cable, right? Because there has been some confusion. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, I mean, we can't talk about any OS level stuff, obviously, but we'll just say that it works properly with my LG CX. The thing is, yeah, I mean, you know, the box has got 8K, 4K, 120 written on it. So the idea that the cable doesn't support HDMI 2.1 or doesn't have the required bandwidth I kind of think this is going to be a bit of a non-issue, but the full review, we shall reveal all. Yeah, I guess uh, moving on to what else is in the uh, accessories box, the stand. What do you make of that? Uh, yeah, so the stand uh, is really interesting, like that they had to include a stand in this thing because, well, as we quickly learned, it doesn't actually, it does not work if you don't have the stand. If it's sitting horizontal, it kind of wobbles. In vertical, it kind of works, but you really want that extra stability. And they have that whole mechanism in there where you can kind of spin it to open a little compartment. When you're horizontal, it holds the screw. When you're vertical, there's that little tab that covers the mounting hole that you can yeah. stick inside the little thing. Like it's, it's really funny to me and awesome in a way, like how clearly a lot of engineering effort was put into just building the stand itself, which is kind of <laughs> funny. We'll talk about the stand in a bit, but um, the DualSense controller, that's the next bit. Oh yeah. Again, we're going to talk about controllers more at the end, as far as we're allowed to within the current embargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, in the hand it kind of feels bigger, I'd say sturdier, more deluxe definitely, I think, than the than the DualShock 4. What do you make of the, the heft of it? Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, we'll talk more about the details in a moment, but there's something about the materials quality, the, the thickness of it, just the everything. It does feel more premium somehow, like c compared to the DualShock 4, mm. uh, which, you know, I love that controller, but it felt a little bit cheap in the plastics department, just a bit. Mm. But but yeah, the DualSense, there is a lot to say about this thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, we'll talk about this later, but just the, the kind of feel of the, when you depress the D-pad feels deluxe, it's kind of bizarre, but amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, basically the final bit of the unboxing, which is... Uh, obviously the console itself and man it's a it's just getting it out of the box is a bit of an effort <laughs> what do you make of that yeah that's the thing is it's really heavy this is like a mini pc tower in many ways uh, which is not you know not necessarily a bad thing it's just surprising it's by far the largest playstation console to date i did attach the um the stand uh, in the horizontal configuration 
and um, it's just like a friction fit, isn't it? There's no screwing on there. Yeah, um, because it has the rubber on the bottom to keep the stand in place, it's very easy to kind of move the unit when it's in horizontal, so you don't really want to touch it. And that's actually the reason why I switched over to vertical mode shortly after setting it up, just to have that extra stability. I mean, so it literally is a stability update in this case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did find that the horizontal stand. You know, you're right. It is essential for having a um, fully stable console. But if you move the console, there's a really good chance that the stand just comes away. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just think generally um, this machine feels as though it was designed to sit vertically, similar to Series X actually. And um, vertical, I think, is the way to go for that. Certainly in terms of lowering its footprint, uh, which is in horizontal considerable. To to say the least <laughs> yeah it's big <laughs> <laughs> um okay well unboxing over for playstation uh we're going to move on to xbox now where we've got a much smaller denser box uh similar to the console itself actually um i kind of really enjoyed this in a, in a in a bizarre kind of way because i was genuinely surprised when i opened the box yeah, but first of all, we have to cut away at the uh, the tape that's holding it all in place. And then the top flap pulls back and then you can kind of see the glory within. I'd say I, I was kind of really sort of quite surprised at, at what they've done here. It's almost like the console is being served up to you as something really special. It's really interesting to see, actually, because, uh, you know, the packaging in the past for Xbox, I don't think, I don't remember it being anything special, but this is uh, really well thought out, I think. And... It makes sense when you consider the shape of the machine to kind of present it in this way and it works. It looks cool. Yeah, yeah. Power your dreams. I think, you know, Microsoft, if they knew what my dreams were, they would certainly not want to power them. They should be depowered, if anything. But um, uh, the one thing, though, about the box, though, is that there's a lot of Halo Infinite mentions on there. Um, yeah. So you really you really get the feeling that that losing Halo Infinite as a launch title was it's it's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I'm kind of reminded of the um, Cyberpunk 2077 Xbox One X. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of work, a lot of industrial design went into that console and the game still isn't out. Xbox One X has been discontinued. So that was kind of bizarre. But yeah, I agree with you. The Halo thing, it leaves a bit of a sour taste if you can't play the game. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the way it's all served up to you, I love it. The little accessories box is really well presented. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's just the basics in there, really. You've got a quick start guide, um, which is really nicely presented. Uh, you've got your HDMI cable, which is fully confirmed. Uh, HDMI 2.1, I've tried it on an LG CX, just as you have. 4K 120, no problem whatsoever. Yep. And uh, you get your power cable, your manual and uh, the controller yeah um, the difference between the controller is that it's more of an evolution versus the the dual sense which is I'd, I'd say it's revolutionary based on what i've used with it so far yeah i mean it's it's just a really nice controller it's 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 really good dual a batteries there which is different to the dual sense which again uses a rechargeable cell but I guess at this point, you know, I've got the two consoles stacked up side by side here. I've also brought in the PS4 Pro, Xbox One X. This form factor thing, it's its a topic that we've got to discuss. So, you know, both boxes side by side versus their current gen equivalents. What do you reckon? Well, both of them broke my current setup, so to speak. <laughs> uh, I have this little compartment under the TV, which was perfect for old consoles. Uh, slide them right in there, everything. Neither one of these machines really fits in there properly, uh, so I have to put them up on top of the stand next to the center channel. And with the way I have the TV mounted, I can only have one of them vertically. Uh, so I actually went with the PS5 because, uh, like you say, in horizontal, it takes up too much space on the surface there. Whereas in vertical, it actually doesn't take up that much space. Uh, so I actually have the Series X lying down and... I don't love it that way. Like it looks really cool when it's in tower mode, but it's it's weird looking when it's on its side. And honestly, neither console is great in horizontal mode, if I'm to be honest. I really think that this is a case where they really need to be vertical uh and it's probably not going to fit nicely in your average setup yeah i think that's a real uh, well i'm not going to say a problem but a challenge definitely because uh, as you say it's just 
that the horizontal configuration for both feels almost like an afterthought. They're clearly designed to be stacked vertically and they just look better, both of them. Uh, form factor wise, what can I say? The, the PS5 is a beast. It's huge. It's, it's the biggest console. <laughs> it's kind of unwieldy in a way. Well, don't forget the CDI. Come on. <laughs> I thought I had <laughs> until you brought it up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, very, very big machine. I still haven't quite got to grips with how I'm going to have it in my setup. I've got both of the machines next to me here. Series X is clearly the smaller machine. I mean, it's certainly wider, that's for sure. But in terms of overall volume, it just seems to occupy a lot less space. It's a lot easier to deal with. The PS5 is, you know, as I said, I just still haven't got quite got to grips with just how big it is and how I'm going to integrate it into my setup. I know what you mean. Looking at them both, I actually kind of like enjoy the design on both of them. Now that I actually see it in person, they've both kind of grown on me a lot. Um, they're very, very different but they're cool yep. and I appreciate the kind of unique look uh, that they both have, but you're right. The size thing, it's, it's a weird one. And I will also say though, that both of them are very dense machines. Like they're both very heavy as well. So they're heavier than any of the previous generation consoles. Uh, you can really feel that cooling system in there. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really cool. No, I mean, just, just seeing them in person like this and actually like the, I think all the plastics in both cases, they feel gen generally quite premium. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm curious about how the shiny central portion of the PS five will go since it seems like a dust attractor in some ways, like, you know, shiny plastic often is, but at the same time, again, you know, overall, like this, this side panels feel really nice and I appreciate the overall build and design of it. And the same for the Series X. It's a really dense, solid feeling machine. Uh, I just wish it looked better. <laughs> well, I wish they both looked better when horizontal, but you know, what can you do? Well, you know, I think in terms of design, I think it's just fascinating to see two very different solutions to the same problem, which is essentially that there's a ton of power going through these machines, a ton of heat being generated, and uh, these challenges need to be overcome. So Microsoft have gone for a very uh, kind of, well, a smaller, denser box, whereas uh, the PlayStation 5 is all about area. It's all about cooling through sheer area. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it is quite, quite fascinating. In, uh, in terms of my thoughts of, on the build quality, PlayStation 5, I really like the plastics simply because, I don't know whether it's simply because it's white, but uh, the problem that I've got with Series X is that it's a real fingerprint magnet. Yeah, you're right, actually. That's a good point. It just seems to attract a lot of oils and stuff from, from your fingers in a way that like, it's a little bit weird like that. Yeah, definitely. So that, you know, that's been a bit of a problem for me, certainly in terms of uh, posing it for photography and whatnot, whereas the PlayStation 5, just has you know white plastic so even if they are there you can't see them and in terms of the uh, center shiny bit uh, who knows how long it's going to stay in that condition but i really like it i think it looks premium i think it looks futuristic so let's move on to what i think is possibly the biggest difference that we're allowed to talk about right now uh, between the two systems which is the controller Xbox Series X, we know that the controller is uh, a refinement of the existing design, and I'd say a highly successful one. Yeah. But PlayStation 5, the DualSense, and the Astrobot game that you get with uh, with the system, which we can talk about, this is this is simply phenomenal. Yeah, I have mine right here. Uh, I haven't been this impressed with a controller out of the box in a long time. This uh, This might be the best controller Sony's ever made. And I really like their controllers and just, uh, all right. So let's, let's get into what the things that I noticed and Astrobot really shows it off well. So obviously, um, the basic feel of it, like the way it sits in your hand, it's, it's perfect. It just feels excellent. Uh, the buttons, the D pad, they fixed these buttons at the top here where I always felt they were a little bit difficult to hit like options and share. Uh, that's better. The touchpad is better. Everything, everything on the surface is there. And the actual lights on the controller are much less bothersome this time mm -hmm. compared to that light bar in the front of the <laughs> PS4. Uh, uh, it also, it has a USB-C port, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the Xbox does too, though. So <laughs> That does have a USB-C port, yeah. <laughs> but um, so the, the reason, though, that the thing that really sells it, it's two things. It's the, the sort of like 
haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers. And this is where I see a lot of the potential. I mean, the adaptive triggers work in such that uh, the controller can actually vary the resistance required to pull the trigger. I didn't know what to expect when I heard about this, but it's exactly as advertised and it seems to be quite variable in that it's not just like on off. It's like you could have it so like the first like maybe 30% of the pull is resistance free and then you hit a part where you actually start to have to pull harder and then you imagine like squeezing like, I don't know, like some kind of piece of fruit or something where it's initially a little bit tough and then after a certain point it just snaps through and you can kind of do that. and. You know the game kind of messes with this and so all the actions that use the triggers wind up feeling like really different as a result uh, which actually makes it almost feel like you're using different devices if you know what i mean right yeah i get exactly what you mean and then on top of that uh there's the actual haptic feedback so we already kind of got a preview of this i guess with uh, the switch which has the hd rumble but i really feel they've taken this definitely to the next level just in terms of like the precision, the the feedback you get through the controller almost makes it feel like the surface is somehow like living. But it's like, <laughs> it's in a way where like when you're tiptoeing across different surfaces in Astrobot, uh, you can actually feel the difference in the type of surface. Like if you're walking on glass, skating on ice, moving through like dust. Yeah, like the, the this first part of the level, you're like walking through this area where they're like throwing a ton of particles at you and like rocks and such as you make your way inside. Maybe, did, did you feel this as well? It literally feels like there's like little pieces of debris and pebble like running through the controller in a way. We could spend hours talking about what they're doing with the controller in the, in the Astrobot game <laughs> because it is a revolution uh, in my opinion. I've never felt anything like it. Uh, my only concern is that it's going to get overused to the point where it will become obnoxious. But in Astrobot right now, it feels fresh and exciting. Uh, you know, things I noticed when you're wading through mud, you, you actually feel the resistance of the mud. When it's, when it's raining, you feel the rain coming down. Uh, the other thing which I think we need to talk about is that um, uh, DualShock 4 had a speaker. Uh, but, you know, I always turned the speaker off because it just got on my nerves when, you know, aud audio was piped through the, the controller speaker. But here, when the audio is matched with the haptics, the experience is elevated and it's, you know, the whole thing is just quite unlike anything I've experienced before. And I think, you know, this is, we've had very few actual next gen moments. now. This is the thing that I think is going to be really difficult to convey in this video, because when you look at Astrobot, it's a really good looking game of its type, but you don't look at it thinking, well, this is something that the PlayStation 4 couldn't do, but it, the PlayStation 4 couldn't deliver this experience whatsoever, because the whole interface between the player and the game is revolutionary here. And it's just remarkable. and. I honestly was blown away by it. I agree. I mean, we, we could get, like you said, we could go on and on about this, but it makes a really strong first impression. Uh, but, you know, again, like, like you said, to be fair to the Xbox controller, it, it's not revolutionary, but it's a solid controller. Uh, it's a nice evolution of what they've done with Xbox One. Uh, I think it feels more premium. The sort of grips on the side, you know, the button placement on the shoulders is improved. Everything's just a little bit nicer. So... I think the the takeaway here is that both controllers are excellent, uh, but I'm really impressed with the DualSense stuff. Yeah, I think in this video, obviously, we've been concentrating somewhat more on PlayStation 5 because um, it, it's new. It's actually new to us, whereas, you know, with, yeah. with Xbox Series X, I yeah. mean, I think our catalog of content speaks for itself when, it, when we talk about how impressed we are with it. But yeah, this is um, the first time we've seen PlayStation 5, so it is getting a bit more of the focus in this video. But yeah, I think that's kind of all we really have to say about uh, about the two consoles in the here and now. Uh, embargoes will be coming up shortly. And yeah, there's so much to share. Uh, any final thoughts? I think from my perspective, uh, without giving anything away and not talking at all about platform comparisons, uh, I think people are going to be surprised 
that's that's my takeaway. There are surprises here, right? Yes, I think we can agree on that. There will be surprises. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's leave it at that. Um, thanks for joining me on this one, John. Sure thing. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, well, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Uh, ring the bell for instant notifications whenever new Digital Foundry content drops. And please do consider the DF Patreon. If you can imagine, you know, games like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, we're going to be covering them in depth. And if you want to see those titles with pristine quality video, our Patreon, that's the place to go. And you'll also get that warm and fuzzy feeling of knowing that you're supporting the Digital Foundry team uh, more directly. Uh, but that's all from us for now. Thanks for watching.